Hello, you're listening to WXOJLP 103.3 FM in Northampton and streaming live on the web at valleyfreeradio.org. The time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Red Pill Politics. Um, as promised, we have a representative from uh, Mass Can, the Massachusetts Cannabis Reform Coalition, try and make heads or tails out of this new dilemma that we're facing here in each uh, municipality. These new bylaws seem to keep popping up in an attempt to recriminalize the use of small amounts of marijuana, which is directly in opposition to what the voters of of Massachusetts said quite overwhelmingly. Um, So, uh, Mike, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thanks for having me, Dave. Dale. (laughs) Uh, Thank you very much for taking a few minutes to come on here. Um, I'd like you to take a moment, if you could, tell us a little bit about yourself and explain uh, what it is that MassCan does. I'm on the board of directors for MassCan Normal with the uh, local chapter of, Ma- you know, of Normal, which is the National Organization for Reform of Marijuana Law. Uh, you know, my role, I do a lot of different things, but you know, one of the biggest things is I book the music for the Freedom Rally, so I'm tied into a lot of artists as well as uh, on the Internet and you know, doing websites. But a place that I blog regularly is MikeCan.net, which is a new website, and uh, you can check us out on, at MassCan Normal on, on the Internet at MassCan.org. Wonderful. Um, I, I do like the layout of the website, pretty informative. I was uh, telling our listeners there uh, just last week about some of our efforts over in Springfield. We caught wind that there was a bylaw being proposed there locally, and a number of us went down from area communities, and, and we're very glad that we did because much of the rationale for passing this bylaw was based on a lot of assumptions, for one, and uh, these grand images of using this as a way to generate revenue. Um, but essentially, Essentially, one of the city councilmen there in, in Springfield caught wind of Holyoke and Chicopee that were considering similar legislation. And in his words, he didn't want to get caught at the end of that train. So it didn't appear there were any real concrete numbers behind their um, their push to do this. There was no um, outstanding cry from the people or anything like that. It was um, really, it was more focused on a, a generating revenue, a revenue stream, and it is very poorly thought out, in my opinion. Um, what was sad about the Springfield is well, there was probably seven or eight different towns there uh, represented, but not one of them was from Springfield, not one person. Uh, has that been a, an issue in, in other localities where, where this is happening? Uh, you know, I think it really depends on where, where we're at, you know, which city and town. You know, one of the reasons Boston and Cambridge, for instance, aren't going to do it is because we would have large numbers. In Quincy, we, we had uh, 60, 70 people there. So, you know, there were a lot of residents. But the one we had a handful. And Everett, we really didn't have anyone. So it depends on each community, I think, in terms of how many people are coming out. And what are but the I status think, uh, of, of those uh, towns right now? What Whereabouts are they in the process? Uh, Everett, they actually approved a new fine for uh, public smoking. Um, it hasn't been officially because it has to. Go, there's a two-step process in Everett, so it has to go through the border aldermen, which there's uh, three of them, and you can definitely contact them right now and tell them not to, to approve this. Um, and Methuen, when they passed an extra hundred dollars, you know, it was a negotiation, a compromise. They basically, you know, wanted to please both sides of the, you know, on the issue. I think really. Um, and Brain Tree, they're trying to, you know, pass a three hundred dollar tax on a lot of these cities and towns. Springfield is still up for debate. They could, uh, you know, pull it out of the committee that, you know, they put it in. Same thing with. Quincy, you know, by showing up, which you guys did, even if you're out of town, it, it definitely does help. You know, what we're seeing is that they're giving us concessions, better bills, and they're also putting them into other committees, which is stalling. And it's a, you know, a good thing. They are listening to people that are showing up, and there are some people showing up. Great. Well, that's good. We need it, more of that. We were looking at the the police logs in Springfield, and uh, on any given day, because it rotates and gives you the previous 60 days uh, arrest, and. <laughs> they have a much bigger problem than pinching a few teenagers at the the ball field, you know? Uh, I mean, there's more 
home invasions and murders and and I mean really violent crime compared to to the offenses here and what did show up on the police log we noticed it, where it has uh, possession of class D or, or however they uh, announce it that I'd say at least half of those instances were double bookings when someone got pinched for trafficking and in, in larger uh, actual things that were covered by existing criminal law um, they always threw that charge in there on top of it there was always a felony uh, an underlying felony that existed and they just hit that uh, possession of class d is you know to add insult to injury essentially um but that's some of the some of the tally that was given there so you can't even take that whole number um of uh, possession of class d mike what was what were some of the argument oh i'm sorry uh, so that, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I, think I, uh, I think I missed your question. Oh, wh- what were some of the arguments that these towns were giving for wanting to increase the fee? Like, uh, I think the biggest is they, you know, it was the children, save the children, and, and we don't want smoke in public in schools and parks, um, which does make sense. I mean, you know, I think we all agree that people shouldn't be smoking a joint in front of a kid in a pit playground, but I think the answer for us is, you know, we vote for a $100 fine, and that's all it really should be for the small amount of people that are caught. It's not, you know, it's not that we're encouraging them. We think $100 is a good fine. That's what people voted for. And it's basically the same for alcohol. It's between 50 and 100 in most cities and towns, and it worked, though. Right. But just stick with $100, and that's really been our, you know, argument back. I think that's kind of a silly argument. That's what they said in Springfield, too. They didn't want people smoking marijuana on the street corners, but I don't think kids are going to do that for $100. I mean, that's a lot of money to sleep, smoke a joint on the corner. Absolutely. Uh, I, I doubt very, we were suggesting that they do a, some studies and see if there was any increase in use in public places, and I, my guess would be there isn't. Right. And then another thing, they always, and you're exactly right, they always try to use the kids. They throw that out there because, I mean, you, you got to protect the kids, don't you? Um I would like to see the numbers on that. How many places are people pinched where they're in a a school uh, vicinity or on a a public ball field or a park or something of that nature? I mean, how many of those are there? Is it really the the emergency that is being portrayed to be? Very few. You know, that's the good thing that you ask them to when you go to the city council. How many? And they'll say, I don't know, probably none. You know, it's zero almost. Yeah, you know, I mean, people don't do that. They do list at least in uh, the Springfield log. I believe they have the actual address, the, the physical location where the offense took place. So um, it'd be easy enough to find. Um, I, I can see it happening in a public way in terms of a, a road because you know many times people are pinched with it in a search or something of that nature. Um, but you know, I don't think it's a problem in our schoolyards. Not not the way it's being portrayed. It should. You know, and I, I can't stress enough, I tell people this all the time because the first argument, you know, that, that I hit get hit with is that I'm endorsing it or, or any of us are endorsing the use of it, and that's not the case, and it's a common tactic that's used, and, and that's just not the case, at least not with the activists that I've worked with, is they're not there to support the use of it. It's to decriminalize, and, and I think there's where the true protection of our kids comes in, is yeah, the, it, we talk about protecting the kids. I always like to bring up, you know, what happens when a kid gets fined? He's 18 or 19 or even 17, and they don't have the $400, and the parent pays the fine. And let's we'll say the parent's a single parent, and they have a younger spouse, and they're not getting to eat this month because they had to pay a $400 fine. Mm. I mean, it's you talk about the children. Yeah. I just don't see how more fines protects children. It doesn't, see, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and look at all the long-term impacts, too, if uh, this were to be criminalized. Um, the way it was, it, and it this impacts jobs, getting into college, your mortgage rates, your credit card rates. Um, there's so many things. That, I mean, you got to let the punishment fit the crime. It's it's definitely counterproductive to saddle a person with with something like that, possibly for life. Um, Mike, I, 